Now let's bring in Jan Onosko in Rio. Jan, what's the feeling like there this morning? Well, here in Brazil, um, it's the beginning of the day. People are just waking up and they've got an awful lot to digest this morning. The closest, most polarized vote in Brazil's election history, less than 2% between the two candidates. And with me to discuss what this means for the future of Brazil, I have João Ferris Jr., who's a political professor from the State University of Rio de Janeiro. João, welcome to the program. So, first of all, what's your reaction to this historic election result? I think it was a very tight result, but, you know, it showed that Brazilian people rejected the government of Jair Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro tried um, but through many means to you know, alter the result of the election, even through public policy before the election, which is kind of illegal in Brazil. But he didn't manage to succeed. So that, I think, marks, you know, a position of the Brazilian people, a rejection of his policies, of his government, and of, of his overall politics. I mean, he has talked very often about, uh, questioned the validity of Brazil's electoral system, and he hasn't yet spoken, you know, either last night or this morning. Apparently, he went to bed. He didn't even congratulate Lula. I mean, that's very unusual, isn't it? What do you think is going through his mind today? I think it's the first time that a president, a candidate that is defeated, does not acknowledge, you know, his defeat and, and the victorious part. And I think that even yesterday, I mean, we know from from local news that he tried to, you know, with a with a director of the federal police, to create checkpoints and stop the transportation of voters in the northeast, so Lula wouldn't get that many votes over there. So he was devising means to alter and to fudge, you know, the the electoral results. You know, I wouldn't doubt that he's trying to with us cabinet, his small posse trying to devise means to you know, contest the electoral results. But it's very hard. It's becoming very hard for him to do that. Absolutely. And it was an extremely polarized vote, the closest in Brazil's history. What do you think this result means for the future of the country? I was with some Bolsonaro supporters last night outside his home in Rio, and they were saying they're never going to deliver the country to Lula, to an ex-convict. Do you think they will let this go peacefully? Yeah, I think there's this general view that the country is very polar polarized. I think people can compare it to the United States, too, under Trump. But I think that most people who voted for either part are not militants. They are not staunch supporters. You know, they tended to one side or the other, but most Brazilians are not very politicized. And won't be able, won't be willing to go to the streets to protest as the first, you know, sign of any kind of discontent. So I don't think it's that polarized. And in terms of Lula's ability to govern, there are an awful lot of Bolsonaro allies in Congress and the Senate. Is he going to be able to push through any kind of agenda? I think Lula has shown throughout his career to be a very skillful negotiator. Right. He's probably the best in town for, to do that job, you know, but and also people who were elected as Bolsonaro supporters, not all of them are very ideological. So many Brazilian politicians who were elected, were close to Bolsonaro, was like were like pragmatic rather than ideological. Bolsonaro played the ideology card very hard. Not all of the, his supporters did, though. Do you think he's going to go away? Is this the end for Bolsonaro in Brazilian politics? That's a very good question. I, I really don't know. He was very insignificant before he was elected president. Maybe he will go back to that, that situation. <laughs> Who knows? Well, we will see. João Ferreira Jr., thanks very much for joining us. So, still no word from President Bolsonaro no reaction from him to the result of this historic election. As soon as we do hear from him, we'll bring you that news here on France 24. All right, Jan, thanks so much for that. Jan Onosko reporting for us from Rio.